there's a way to make an entrance. <laughs> My destiny. It was now a conspiracy of witches. Download Veely today. <laughs>
Prefabricated cupboards and cabinets are a great way to save time and money on a project like this. Here we go. Apparently these are easy to assemble in 10 minutes, it tells us. <laughs> they... I love shopping for a kitchen in pieces. Yeah. <laughs> I think the nice thing is that what we're trying to do is achieve the look of a custom kitchen. I mean, we are customizing the solution for it, yeah. but we're trying to do it at a good price point. So it's going to be, what, about $1,000 for all the cabinetry that you need. That's probably, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. Can't go wrong there. So we've now got our kitchen cabinets chosen, yeah. all the cladding, baseboard, top detailing, yeah. and doors. Fine. Doors, perfect. Now all we have to do is build it. Yeah. <laughs> Can't wait for that. <laughs> Paint and fabrics become challenges for the yurt. It's kind of cute. I can Is pass on the dragonflies. Really? We'll check in to see that it's all come together. However... The floor has begun to cut. Well, I'm really worried about the floor. The yurt is rolling along. Good we're keeping warm, and we're doing what we can to keep design costs in check. Apparently, these are easy to assemble in 10 minutes, it tells us. <laughs> We're faced with a deadline as the first long weekend of summer is fast approaching. As we know, we've got a heat wave coming and we've got a client who's going to be desperate to use this place. So um, there's really nothing, we'll be you know. to use this place if we've got yeah. a heat wave coming. <laughs> well, he's that held up sounds. his end of the bargain, which is he's built it and he's working every weekend. So I just want to make sure that we stay on track. And I think we should have a goal of having this completed within like three weeks before the long weekend, for sure. Remember the kitchen cabinets we bought? I'm having them professionally sprayed, so now they'll be custom at a fraction of the you? cost. These are all the kitchen cabinets. Antique white, yeah? Do them all antique white, okay? So this is, these are gonna look great. Noel's also priming some cheap finds I came across at a few vintage stores that I love to visit. Oh my gosh, I appreciate you priming these for me so much, because I want I'm gonna do a hand-painted finish Time to get busy. We're going to hand paint the primed furniture pieces to maintain a rustic cottage charm because I don't want them to look brand new. Let's talk about colors. Um, I got you two dark ones. Okay. One green, one blue, in case you want to experiment and play around a bit. Okay. And these are our colors. I like this one. Yep. Chairs, chaise, uh, box, box, table. Coffee table, and then what about the vanity? Then I would do the vanity in the same one as the coffee table. Okay. Nice, really, really soft green. Okay. Tommy and Sean are on painting detail, which frees me up to do other things. I can only hope they keep their minds on their work. Sean? Yeah? Don't you worry about the fact that it looks like you're just putting on another coat of primer. That's pale blue paint. I promise you there will be a contrast. You will see blue on that chair if you paint it, if you paint it properly. And the fabrics will be more vibrant than the, than the frames of the furniture. <laughs> Time to find fabrics for slip covers and accents. I'm thinking something washable and durable for the yurt's casual lifestyle. I want the colors that I use inside to have enough kind of punch that they stand out because there's gonna be so much white around the exterior that we wanna have some really cottagey tones inside. And that is cute. So what do you think about the colors? I like the colors. Yeah? Is there anything that you look at in here and say, okay, I'd like to really eliminate that? Don't say it about the pod. Don't say it about the what? <laughs> <laughs> okay, no. That's my favorite. It's kinda cute. It is a cottage after all. The plaid's good. I can is pass on the dragonflies. Really? Is that a little too, uh, a little <laughs> too girly for you, <laughs> Maybe like well, one, Sarah... one pillow or something. Yeah, this is what it would be. It wouldn't be all over the place. <laughs> so yeah. it, like, we not, were thinking not of couch. maybe covering the walls with this okay. all the way around. I never like it to look too matchy. One of the good things about accent pillows is that you should try and create an unusual mix but you need to be working with everything in the same color palette. So there's nothing that you would totally eliminate? No. 
does that mean that we can sort of proceed and sort of purpose this on the furniture as we think it's appropriate and you'll be cool with that? Yeah, for sure. Okay, great. I love it when clients give us free reign. Come on. Let's go see what the yurt looks like. Oh. oh my gosh, are you okay? No, I don't need your foot. Let's go. Ow! Ah, I love the country. A two-hour drive, a couple of bruises, and we're back at the yurt to okay. build the kitchen island. Sean's made a lot of progress since I was last here. It's actually quite wow. incredible. Oh my gosh. It really... feels so much bigger than I thought it would. I gotta shop for more furniture. <laughs> look at the appliances, they look awesome. They're amazing. This looks so good now that it's been repainted. Yeah. Sean's been having a little... <laughs> <laughs> Party of one. We've got some, well, the floor has uh, has begun to cut slightly, which doesn't often correct itself. Well, I'm really worried about the floor. I just think that over time it's not gonna last and I'm, I don't know what the problem is. They bought the floor from a local supplier and they've installed it themselves. And I'm thinking that maybe the problem is that there was too much moisture when it went in. And, uh, but we'll see. I mean, the weather's been pretty damp, so maybe when it dries out, it'll get better. Yeah, that's looking too white. We get out the paintbrushes again and address a few other unforeseen issues. I'm gonna give you a good deal on wet wood. Yeah, it was a quarter of the price. Okay. So we knew that that was a possibility. Sean has built a Mongolian yurt on the shores of his favorite lake. We've got a heat wave coming, and we've got a client who's gonna be desperate to use this place. And we're pulling it together to meet the deadline with great fines and cheap labor. I'm gonna trust Tommy that uh, it's gonna look not all like white primer. Yeah, that's looking too white. I hate to admit it, but Sean was right. The paint all looked the same once we got it up here. So it's time to embolden the color slightly. So we're gonna put the sink here, I guess. This is going to be a drawer and a cabinet, then dishwasher, and then a bank of drawers. Right. We're going to attach all of these units together. And then what I want to do is turn this into a really neat island. So we've got tongue and groove paneling that we're going to clad all around the outside. We need side gables, and they're going to come out the full distance. And we're going to clad around them, back in, all the way across the back, out and around. Hey, hey, and then a baseboard detail around the bottom. And then we've got an eight foot butcher block. I don't feel like I'm lifting anything. One, two, three. Okay. Sweet. That really, really looks fantastic. So this space is great. So much better. I mean, this is gonna be a really cute bedroom. It's, it's a great charming. space. We can have the trunk in here. Mm -hmm. We've even got room for a little, like a country chair. Just and then I think bring in some fun, kind of colorful things back in here. I think we can really concentrate on this area. Mm -hmm. All right, the island's almost done. Now for the sink install. Do I hear once? Uh-oh. Do I hear twice? Perfect. A few logistical and budget-related problems have cropped up. Sean's here to meet and discuss the plan for moving forward. One of the things is that right now, this is the wall that runs, here's our island. Yeah. 
and then this is the wall, and you've got a little return that goes to the bedroom for stability. This actually has a fairly significant wobble factor to it, and I think that we actually need to add a brace on the other side. Okay. Yeah. And I think it's also important to lose the drywall. I mean, if, it, if there's even a slight moisture issue, the thing about the drywall that we probably should have discussed earlier is that it's not even green board drywall, which is really moisture. sort of suited to moisture and moisture yeah. resistant. And so if you're open to the fact of doing the paneling effect, I think that's a really, really good idea. Um, as far as the floor goes, yeah. it's too bad that it's cupped, huh? So, uh, the reason it cupped, I think, it wasn't really dry wood, right? right. But it was... They gave you a good deal on wet wood. Yeah, it was a quarter of the price. Okay. Okay. So we knew that that was a possibility. Yeah. It's um, the rustic charm of the yurt. I so what I'm probably going to end charm. up doing is over the summer, uh, screwing it down. As an ongoing project. Sort of an ongoing project. Sure. Do a couple boards each Fine. weekend. <laughs> How about either like haze yeah. green or sage gray for the base of the island? Sure. Something sort of natural yeah. looking? We definitely we deepened color. the color yeah. of the furniture. It was looking really white. You were totally right. It's yeah, funny. I really, I totally stand. Well, no, I sit corrected. Yeah. yeah. As the move-in date is fast approaching. When do you want to close it? Uh, nine days. Okay. Okay. I'm calling in reinforcements now. Here's the real challenge: oh. is we don't really have the time to do a test. I mean, we're driving two hours out of the city. So what we have to do is we have to decide what we're going to paint it, make that commitment, buy the paint, cross our fingers and hope like anything that we actually have the right color. How do you feel knowing that you have one week today to close the yurt when you haven't even seen it yet? <laughs> <laughs> temperatures. The second day it was sort of nice, but everything was a disaster inside. Day three, we're here. It started to rain. There's thunderstorms coming, high winds. It's cold, and uh, nothing's going along too well. Sean's been spent every weekend for almost two months building this structure, and we have to have it finished in six days in order for them to have guests here for the long weekend. And uh, I don't know if it's going to happen. Well, we better get to work. It's, it's taking longer. Everything's taking longer. The weather's not helping. The dampness isn't helping. The location isn't helping. Like, if we need anything, it's an hour, it's a two hour run to town to get any supply we need. To go to a bathroom, it's an hour round trip. Deadlines, weather, and distance, all working against us. However, as they say, a little teamwork goes a long way. Look at that! Look at that! Will Sean's yurt be ready? A lakeside retreat. It's yurt delicious. Two hours from the city, uncooperative weather, and the odd issue. To go to a bathroom, it's an hour round trip. But I feel like it's coming together. Today's the final day. The team's present and accounted for. We are working hard to make Sean's deadline. Even the sun is shining. Let's start from the top. Jess, what have you got that needs to be done? We have to put the wheels on the trunk. So the table base is done. What we have to do is we have to do a finished sanding. Our teamwork is paying off. Despite the distance, the deadline, and the budget, it's coming together. Install the shelves. nice because it kind of ties Can you do that again for me? Yeah. It allows you to put something taller, taller if you want on this side, like yeah. if you have any big tall jugs or anything. I am really excited about this being the last day. Um, all my family's coming up, they're going to see it. yurt is both fresh and rustic. It's the result of his dream for uncomplicated summer living. So we have two mirror options. This is one. Wow. What do you think? Looks good. Okay, we have to set up the whole living room. Yeah. How many people
table does a yurt hold anyway? There's nothing more cottagey than pale green. I noticed that the dragonflies made it in. The dragonflies did make it in, but did you also notice yeah. that there's, there is a non-dragonfly option which Sarah has provided for you on the reverse of those yes. cushions. <laughs> I was so excited about working in a round structure. <laughs> Where Sarah's put the sofa, there's a little bit of a flat behind it because of the window. And then the carpet creates a sort of rectangular area to bring everything together onto. And so you don't feel like you have to push the furniture against the walls in a room like this. What I love is that everything was a deal. Like the yes. stools were $15 each. The chairs everything. were $5. Yeah. Where can you get a chair for $5? Like, I think Sean knew different? something that the rest of us didn't know. I think he knew that this could be really good when it was all done. Yeah, absolutely. He I think he also court. was smart enough to know that he needed about 10 people to think of that. <laughs> <laughs> but this is why we love doing things in the country. This is not every day. Country projects are when we all get to go hands-on as a team and work together. These are tools. And build things <laughs> and paint and yeah. use our power tools. And, you know, and really, yeah. it's, it's so empowering. It's so much fun. I'm really looking forward to uh, having her family up and... Caroline and I have now sort of built this and eventually we'll have kids up here and hopefully our grandkids will go as we sort of continue to build on from it. And it's a fantastic start, I can't believe it.